Hey, what's going on, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, homebrew news, and much, much more. So today, I wanted to cover a number of news stories for the PlayStation that doesn't necessarily need a whole video to cover it. While we're here, I will talk about a couple of other projects that doesn't necessarily relate to the PlayStation scene, but very cool regardless. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so back on July the 7th, we saw that there was a system update for the PlayStation 5, which put it over on 5.50. Now, this update was all about this support for ALLM, which is audio low latency mode. And so now you can adjust this in the settings. So go to settings, screen and video, video output, and then ALLM. If you're new to ALLM, which I am, there is this site over here on HDMI.org, which has the specifications of what this does. And basically it says it enables the ideal latency settings to automatically be set, allowing a smooth, lag-free, and uninterrupted viewing and interactivity. It says that AALM lets a game console, PC, or other device send a signal to the display, which will cause it to automatically switch to a low latency, low lag mode for gaming. So this could benefit others too. Reduce latency and lag from console connections to PC for faster gaming. So that was the main thing that it had, uh, had in here. Also, you can see it says, if you select automatic, your TV will automatically switch to low latency mode while playing games. And if you select off, ALLM won't be enabled except for VRR output. And then the last line here is just improves system performance. Now, what was interesting about this release, at least in my eyes, was, was that we didn't see the same thing happen over here for the PlayStation 4. So obviously, it's probably something that's in the hardware that doesn't allow the PlayStation 4 to turn on that feature. But typically, whenever a PlayStation 5 system update comes out, the PlayStation 4 is updated as well. So I found it a bit odd that the system updates weren't released in a pair this time. What does that mean? I'm not really sure. Since the PS5 was now updated to 05.50, you may be wondering about some of the recent BD-J exploits. Well, I did a video over here on July the 6th on building a PS5 file dumper sample from the BD-J SDK on my PlayStation 5, which was setting at 4.03. So if I play this video here, then you will see in just a second what it looks like when it connects up. And once it starts sending the files, which all of the files in the currently running app, which is app zero over to my computer. So at this point it's sending them and then it will say done. Now, if you wanna see what the contents of those files looks like or how you can build your own ISO image, definitely go and take a look over here at this video. Now, what's interesting about this was, was that I was running this on a 4.03 PS5 which we all know 4.03 is one of the magic firmwares for the PlayStation 5, especially if you want to potentially do jailbreaking on it. Now, over here in Twitter, I saw that Nanospeed Gamer published this tweet saying that even on PS5 5.50, that same application that we ran on the 4.03 still works. So you can see it right there. And then there is proof of the screenshot of that system running on 05.50. And this is very good news. We'll see what develops out of this in a bit. Next up, we have Andy or the Flow Zero giving another talk, just like the one that he gave just a couple of weeks back on the Blu-ray Disc Sandbox Escape. Now, there's nothing that's in this that's making me think that there's going to be any information that's new that we don't already have, 
But still, it will be interesting to see when this event happens, what he actually says during his talk here. I do expect, again, that this is going to be the same exact information, maybe just formulated in a different words. But something that I know that the PlayStation scene will be watching, especially if there is a video released. I will also be monitoring this conference, at least on Twitter, and being able to see if maybe there is anything new that shared, and I'll obviously report back here. On the PlayStation 4 front, we've had a number of different things kind of come out. One of them is, is that there is this brand new Gold Hen Cheats Manager. So if we scroll down here, you can see that this is a simple PS4 homebrew application that manages Gold Hen cheat code files. So this is the JSON files or the SHN files that we all know and love that gives us the ability to cheat paired on top of Gold Hen version 2.2.2. But it states in here that with this version, 0 0.70, installed game list filter to show only available cheats. And then there is an offline cheat pack that you can install from USB HDD. So if you potentially have a PlayStation 4 that doesn't have internet access, you can use this offline cheat pack in order to update it manually through a USB connection. So I think this will make a great addition for those that really want to keep their PlayStation 4s completely offline, but still wants to take advantage of the gold hand cheats. Next up, back over here on Twitter, there was this user called Master that released these PlayStation 4 gold theme and a PlayStation 5 theme and sound. Okay, so there again, this is what that theme currently looks like. Okay, and so once you download that application, it's basically an executable, and you punch in your IP address here, and it looks like there is a gold theme, it looks like there is a normal theme, so that's nice, at least there's a way to go back, and then there is the PlayStation 5 theme. On the PlayStation 5 theme, there is this option down here. This was the option that allows you to change the startup sound to the PlayStation 5 startup sound. And for normal, you can go back to the PlayStation 4 sound. And then for the gold theme, you can go to the PlayStation 3 sound. So, and there's the font top that they're currently using. So anyway, something that I think is pretty cool. You know I love themes. I've got a video on themes. So I love checking out new themes. Then we have got an update over here for the 60 FPS patch for Elden Ring. So there was actually a video by Modded Warfare, if you want to go over to his channel, on how to create a 60 FPS patch for Elden Ring. If you don't want to do that, you can always take a look at this option right here. This is basically a torrent file that has the patch already built in for 60 FPS. Now, one thing I noticed was, was that there wasn't a lot of people seeding this. So if people don't seed it, then obviously you can't download it. But if you take a look around, you can probably find this somewhere else. And then, if you use Lappy's icon mask, well, you can take advantage of some of these icons that are currently available for Elden Ring. So here is some brand new fresh icons for Elden Ring if you use Lappy's icon mask application. Looks like there's several really cool options in here so you don't have to stay with the standard icon if you don't want to. And then in a bit of fun news, the game OutRun has a track editor that you can take advantage of to create your own OutRun tracks from scratch. You can also come in here and you can edit original OutRun tracks and supporting data. There's scenery pattern editor, a hot pattern editor, and then a bunch more. You can export and play these tracks using this application called Cannonball. But I thought that this was a very cool project. At least it brings me back to one of my most favorite games, which is OutRun. 
I definitely don't think that I would spend the time and the effort in building my own track, but I would definitely be interested in taking advantage of others' work that they've went ahead and built their own. And then last but not least, the mod chip that is making news everywhere, which is the Pico Boot. So this is an IPL replacement chip for the Nintendo GameCube. It's open source, it's cheap, and it is easy to install. So you can basically pick up one of these Raspberry Pi Pico boards for around $4. They are around $10 on Amazon, though. Uh, there's only five wires to solder. You can program it via USB cable. There's no additional drivers and programs. And you can automatically boot to any doll app of your choice. So it uses IPL injection, which is an approach superior to mods like the Xeno GC. And if you're not familiar with that Xeno GC chip, basically that's a chip that is used for the drive of the GameCube, which allows it to play, you know, burnt disk as well as be able to run a homebrew application. But one thing to keep in mind is, is that with the Xeno GC, you're still very dependent upon that optical drive to be working and performing. And just keep in mind, again, with the drives, a lot of these drives in these older consoles are starting to become quite old. So that means that there is a very high risk of failure. So it would be obviously the most optimal if you don't have to use the optical drive absolutely at all. And one other thing just to quickly add into this is, is that this project being open source is going to open up all kinds of features and functionality to be added to the GameCube. And while this uses the original Raspberry Pi Pico, keep in mind that at the very end of June, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced the Raspberry Pi Pico W which is the Wi-Fi version. So right now, you have to manually open up your GameCube, get to your Raspberry Pi Pico, and then plug in a USB cable in order to update it. But in the future, I really see them taking advantage of the Pico W in order to take advantage of the Wi-Fi related features. Okay, and so that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching. I greatly appreciate you for hanging out here with me today. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!